What is a CSS reset and why do you need one? First, please allow me to thank Hover.com for sponsoring this episode. Hover.com's minimalist intelligent search will help suggest the perfect domain for your next project with hundreds of domain extensions available. Get 10% off your own domain name and support this channel by going to Hover.com forward slash RoboSquid TV and using the promo code RoboSquid at checkout. Okay, let's create a website really quick. Our body will contain a main element and nested within we'll place an article, which will contain a heading using the H1 tag and a paragraph with some text in it. Let's end that paragraph with a link to the channel. The last thing I want to do to demonstrate a point is add a background color to our body. I'll give it a light gray. And take a look at our page. Clearly the heading has been bolded and increased in size and our link is blue and has an underline. These styles were added by the web browser by default. We talked a little bit about this in our last video. And take a look at the background. Why doesn't the color extend all the way to the edge of the page? If we look at the body in Chrome DevTools, you can see the browser applied a margin on our body tag. Never have I wanted a margin on my body element. There is a lot of CSS applied automatically to your web page that you generally don't think about. But if you aren't aware that it's there, you'll probably run into some strange issues that will drive you nuts. There are a few philosophies on remedying this problem. You could use a CSS reset. At minimum, a CSS reset could be something as simple as removing the margin from the body element so we get the full width of the page. It's also common to set the HTML element's height to 100%. If you watched our last video on the CSS box model, you know I like to include a snippet setting the box sizing of all of our elements to border box. And if you aren't using border box, you'll want to watch that last video. A common CSS reset boilerplate known as the HTML5 Doctor CSS Reset is also a nice choice to start with. HTML5 Doctor is a fork of another old popular boilerplate that has been adapted to include resets for HTML5 elements. You can take a look at the code and get a sense of what it does, mostly removing default padding, default margin, removing bulletin points from lists, uh, really just getting the elements down to their bare bones. Or often you may see a universal selector being used to remove all the padding and border from every element. This is most likely not going to be efficient because you will likely add back many of the styles you would have removed later on in your code. Not that you can't, it's just inefficient, slightly. Don't make too much extra work for yourself. Some of the styles added by the browser is fairly useful or helpful enough in most cases. There are boilerplates that aim not to reset the browser CSS, but to actually keep some of the useful styles, but make the default CSS more consistent across multiple web browsers, such as normalize.css. The browsers are applying CSS by default, but not all the browsers are using the same default CSS. So using normalize will give us more predictable results. Again, you can take a look at the code to get an idea of what it's doing. It's well commented and does a good job of explaining what's going on. Towards the top of the document is arguably the more important code, starting with a rule to ensure that the line height is the same across all browsers. Just remember that normalize is not a CSS reset. It in fact keeps a lot of the default margins and padding. Normalize only aims to make sure that the CSS starts out appearing the same in all browsers. Let's talk about how you could include something like HTML5 Doctor or Normalize into your project. If you are new to HTML and CSS, what you'll want to do is add another link tag into your head to load your reset CSS. Make sure it is loaded first, so your code looks something like this, with the reset CSS being loaded followed by your custom style sheet on the next line. Doing this, the web browser can download both or all of your style sheets at the same time in parallel. The other method is to place an at import at the top of your CSS file with the relative path to the CSS file you want to include. Remember that CSS loads from top to bottom and cascades, so you always want to make sure that your reset is at the top so that it is loaded first. But using at import creates a problem. If you're using some kind of bundler software such as Webpack, this is fine because Webpack will actually pull that imported code in and export out one CSS file when you build for production. If you don't know what I'm talking about or you aren't using Webpack or something similar, you won't want to use the at import method. When you import in CSS, what happens is the browser first downloads the CSS file and then pauses as it waits to download the imported style sheet, effectively doubling the download time. So stick to two link tags if you're using vanilla HTML and CSS. If you are confused about what I'm talking about with Webpack, ignore that for now and subscribe to the channel. We'll go over it soon. This video was made possible with the support of Hover.com. After you master making websites with me, you're going to need a domain name for that website. Whether you need a .com, .io, .blog, or any of the other hundreds of domain extensions offered, Hover.com is here to set you up and has a great support team if you need any assistance. Get 10% off your domain now and support the show by going over to hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. 
and entering the promo code RoboSquid at checkout. I hope this has been educational for you guys. If you have any questions about this episode, please leave a comment, send me a tweet, or comment on Facebook. I'll see you next time. Thank you.